Of printing a bit slowly because we have a problem with the passports. <coughs> yes. And I want to say this without fear of contradiction. During COVID, all the companies manufacturing passports collapsed because there was zero travel. So for three years, there were no passports being, being, being manufactured by them. So, but when COVID went about uh, a year ago, more than a year ago, one and a half years ago, then the companies have started now coming back and it's taking time for them to be resuscitated because they have collapsed all of them because there was, no, there was zero trouble. And these are technical and security companies. To bring them back is a problem. Right now, as we speak, we have ordered 700,000 passports but we are not able to get them. The problem of lack of booklets is all over the world. There are many countries who want people to travel. They cannot travel because there are no passports. But we are doing everything possible. We have ordered 700,000. They have told us from January, okay, from mid-January, this coming year. We can now start receiving 100,000, 200,000, and people will get our 700,000 that we ordered about, about uh, four months ago. So. My fellow guest, James, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, how are you this evening? You're good? Yes. My name is Ambassador Julius Petroco. Yes, for my question, citizen service. For those who are meeting for the first time, I think that quite a number of people who we have never met. Uh, I am really honored to be here this evening to join a classical team in the official launch of a blocking tomorrow. It will be the this gentleman, the gentleman who can do this, who came to my support at Sydney. So I tell you, I don't know. I've been today there together with the. Where is this guy there? Now that guy there with long hair. The guy with long hair. Yes, together with him. They came to my office about two weeks ago and invited me officially to come. I told them I was going to come. To join you as occasion to launch this unique program and looking to work. I don't know why you chose the name unlocking to work. Because it would have been easier to say unlock in the future. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow has a specific as a specific reason. But I'm here really to be part of you to be able to be part of this event to unlock tomorrow. And I don't know why you chose me. The government is very big we have to join PSS. But maybe it is a special reason why we are here in this city. But uh, just to begin, uh, the work I do on daily basis is related to citizen services, actually providing government services to the nation. Like I want to be, many of you are enjoying services where you are actually mandated to provide services and uh, services in immigration, services in different aspects of the government. I'm um, very to ensure that those services are provided for in the, for, in the most efficient way. But uh, as for the event tonight, I think uh, I want to go to the El Clasico, El for coming up with this when you look at unlocking tomorrow, what comes to your mind is a bright future. You want to unlock the future. What do you need to do to unlock the future? From where I sit, it is very important to look at the future as having many possibilities. And uh, I want to believe that all of us when we package our ideas, when we package what we have for the future, we can be able to open many windows. 
Of course, we begin, we start with education. Education becomes the, 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 the main enabler for unlocking more. Education becomes key. And when I talk about education, it's education at all levels. Education starting from the basics and the primary level, then you come to high school, then you come to college, you don't make it, you go to university, you go to uh, first degree, second degree, and the higher degrees. So education becomes the becomes foundation. Foundation level. As we talk about, as we look at education, education is not the only thing that we need to adopt. We also need to look at talent. There are people who have not been able to get education, but they are so talented that they are so good in their thing that you can never take them. I want to give you a simple example. When you look at uh, any control, for example, I don't think you will be on a certain level of education, but it's so talented that he has been able to conquer all. He is the fastest man in the world, all right, in Marathon. Nobody beats him, all right? If you combine the entire seven billion people in this world, nobody can beat him because of talent. Apart from talent, is also done a lot of purpose. Because they say repetition is the mother of skill. When you, okay, we used to live the, the same neighborhood. At 4 a.m. in the morning, he's on the road. This is the road. 4 a.m. Every day, he's on the road. So, talent combined with a lot of exercise, a lot of practice, will really adopt tomorrow. Apart from every picture, there are no other talented people or very intelligent people. If you look at, for example, uh, somebody like Bill Gates, who never went to your second year of campus, he was able to create Microsoft that transformed the world in terms of technology. He was able to create Microsoft, is now in other things, healthcare, agriculture, and many other things. So it is really possible for us to face tomorrow, to unlock the future by looking at what we have. Microsoft was, I was told, it was, was only in the top 10 in this class. He was at the bottom, but he had some special gift. I wouldn't want to call it talent. All right? Okay, let me say, in class, he was a little bit thick. All right? I don't know if that's correct. He was a little bit uh, thick in class. But he had something special. That's why he was able to create Microsoft. And there are many other examples. Of people have done so well, and yet when they're in class, they're not very good in class, they may not be very good in, in the field, but they have some special gift, some special talent. So, the challenge I want to give you, ladies and gentlemen, is where is your talent? Where is your special gift that you can become that business or that you can become? Even the Alibaba he was talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm told the Alibaba was also another big man. <laughs> <laughs> All right? But he has been able to create a very, very uh, good solution. So what we are looking at here is you need to look at yourself and ask yourself, what is it that one thing that you are good in that you can do it so well? That anybody else will come and say, this person is really talented in this or this person really knows their thing. Whether it is sport, whether it is technology, whether it is education, whether it is health, whether it is whatever it is. Because at the end of the day, the only challenge we have, most of us, we are looking for money. Yeah. And you know, money does not just come. You must have a solution for something. Absolutely. You must be solving a certain problem. Or it's not money. Money will always follow that one person who creates a solution yep. to a problem. So you must ask yourself, what is that problem that needs a solution? And then you work 
around that 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 problem, then man will just stop it. So let let people who are here to say, let's not begin with man. Begin creating a solution. We begin creating something that someone would say they pay for anything for your solution. That way, we move the country forward, we become very successful, we become very prosperous, and we come back here some day and celebrate and see they are the person who was able to create a success. And there are so many problems in the society, in all sectors. It's there are problems in transport, there are problems in healthcare, there are problems in education, there are problems even in media, there are problems in technology. Yours is just to sit down. Let us not look at these shortcuts. These shortcuts are those which are critical. Shortcuts actually are the building grounds for corruption. When you see somebody driving a big car, you ask them where the big car is. If you go to from, from someone, you want the big car. Instant. You don't even know the story of the person. How did they get it? How did they get the money? How did they get there? So, can you get the gentleman? Let's be good one. Let us be. Let us take time. To be very creative, to be very innovative, and indeed, we shall be able to adopt the world. As I wind up, I want to say that uh, in where I sit in the State Department of Immigration, and this from the interior, we are doing our best to ensure that uh, we provide services, we coordinate services, and uh, this government, just to say something about this government, is trying its best to make sure that we liberate the technology to provide government services and uh, I have given the responsibility to coordinate uh, for the volume of services on to the e citizen platform. And uh, President William Brutus very clearly he wants to link the technology to provide services to ensure that we change the country. Many of us in this room have our smartphones and uh, many of us are able to share them better, they are able to transact one or two things. But we are saying we can get, instead of going to queue in government offices, we can get all the services of the phone so that we can be able to join services at the home. Of the level, of the home. And uh, we are doing our best. And the reason why this government believes that technology is the end is because if you look at China, China, if you look at the, the, the digital economy of China, digital economy contributes about 45% of the Chinese economy. If you look at other countries like uh, in Europe or even in America, most countries are, are actually enjoying. But when you come to Kenya, we are only enjoying 7% of our GDP being contributed by, by the digital economy. So we have to, we have to move the entire country to go this way. So that at least we move from 7.5% currently to maybe about 30 40 percent And that is the vision of of the president of the And for us to change this country, ladies and gentlemen, the president is very clear. It cannot be a quick fix. There are no shortcuts. We must really decide and agree to walk the journey together. And it is not going to be easy. If you listen to the stories of countries that are there, like Singapore, like South Korea, they must have some people somewhere they have just decided we must take a country. Sometimes it's a bit painful to begin with. But I want to ask us to get pressure to do this job as we move forward. Because it cannot be easy. Look at it this way. Sixty years ago, John Mokenan, the founding father of this country, was talking about three things. Mama Patrat was talking about eliminating illness, eliminating disease. And there was another one. What was the other one? Illiteracy, disease, and what? And poverty. 60 years down the line, it's like we are just there. We are going to move. Why? Because the leadership has always wanted to be in the comfort zone. We want to just, we want to just be there. But if we don't become bold and criticize, we cannot change our country. That is why I'm confident that within another one to two years, we should be able to see the fruits of this government. So I want to urge us all of us to be a little patient this government. I know there are many things which have changed. There are many things the government is trying to change, but it's 
is not going to be the same as usual. Otherwise, after five, ten years, we shall still be struggling with the same things if we don't become precise. So I want to add just to be a bit patient with this government. But for me, I have the good news for you. The good news for you is that let us take time to look at what we have in our hands. You don't have to look at what another person has. Look at what you have in your hands. And surely, together, we can be able to unlock, to work, and make this country great. I don't know if you want me to speak more than that. I know you are not very happy with me, but I have to just pass the message the way it is because it is the right message and it's the right thing to do. Because I'm not looking for shortcuts. I'm not looking for what? All right, uh, you excuse me because I'm being a little bit uh, factual. But you see, that is not really the way you are We all get people here. We want to have better things. We want to have better things. How can we get to the better tomorrow? We get to the better tomorrow by making sacrifices now. And sharing and ensuring that we use what we have. We have the infrastructure in terms of phones. We have uh, people who are willing to work. We have a population which is willing to deliver. And the only way we can be able to change our country is to be able to start up. And I say that all confidently because if you look at the money we are collecting from our taxes, about 60% of the money we collect goes to service care. Then about about twenty percent of that money goes for salaries. How much? What, what percent do you mean? Okay, we have talked about 60, 20. 60, 20. How many percent it means? Twenty percent. Is that enough to do anything? Is it enough to do anything? Even you are me. If you are talking about even you are me. You are taking 60%, you are going to pay 10 to the Chinese, one of them is here. <laughs> you take 20%, you pay the salaries of the workers. You remain with 20% to pay for primary school education, to pay for the teachers, to pay for, for all, the, the, all the other developments you talk about. It's going to be very difficult to be able to do that. Otherwise, those very remarks, the gentlemen, I want to ask all of us. That uh, let's have a good attitude, let's be positive about that country, let us be positive, let's support uh, a, a classico, let us focus on this program. And I know really the future is bright for all of us. Without much ado, I like the lady who was a marketing kingdom bank. I think I need to hire him my marketing uh, manager for e-cities and services. I think I'll be doing so well. You did so well, actually. And read from the Bible. I don't know which verse it was. How many people have read that? I think it's a very good map. And uh, the lady here, these things are good. Eh? I think they are well polished and they are well school. Otherwise, without much ado, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to officially declare a loving tomorrow officially. Lord. Thank you very much.